again to our virtual worship service and experience together. We come to you from the confines of our beloved sanctuary, still missing one another and yet rejoicing in the connections that bind us. A few announcements as we get started this morning, and that is, I think you might want to call it like Zoomerama this week at Hanover because something's going on, at least one thing, each and every day and at the moment it's still all on Zoom, which makes me want to remind everyone that you don't necessarily need a computer or a smartphone if you even have a phone, and I know even a landline will work. So please, as you are able, join us through Zoom. And so Monday morning at 8.30, the prayer circle meets. At 4.30, the invitational team meets. Tuesday at 1.15, the worship committee. Wednesday, our intern Sarah and the lay committee will be meeting at 1, the coping with COVID group at 5.30, and then on Thursday, the food pantry is open at 8 o'clock in the morning, and at 5 o'clock, the faith and action committee will meet. And tomorrow, that is today, Sunday, we will have again our Zoom fellowship time, and so look for the link to the Zoom fellowship when you receive the recording of this service. And so today it's all about the water. It's about the water and we're going to hear a story where the water was perilous. It could have led to great hurt and harm. And as we hear that story, let us also remember this water, the water that is poured out in our baptism. When family and congregation make covenants to one another and with God to love, serve, honor, and most of all, be faithful disciples together. And may it be so on this day and in all of the days still yet to come, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we ask your blessings this day that you would surround us and fill us and inspire us to be your people, your people who live into hope, who rejoice in the strengthening and the sustaining waters of our baptism. For we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
And so now let us hear this story, a story from the Gospel of Matthew, a story that is perilous for one and yet brings hope for all. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, and the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hands and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got back into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. May God add a blessing to our understanding of this story. I tried. I tried. I did the best I could do. I just had to try it, to walk on water. You see, I wanted to be like Jesus. I wanted to do the amazing things that he does. I wanted to be a faithful disciple and follow him ever so closely, right down to his miracles. And so on that night, the storm in the middle of the lake, We were in the boats, and the wind was raging, and the waves were battering the boat, and suddenly we looked up, and there was Jesus walking towards us on top of the water. And so that was the moment. I was going to go for it. I was going to be like Jesus. And so I said, Jesus, command me, command me to come to you. And he did. And he did. And as soon as he did, I believed I could do it because he believed in me. And so I took that first very tenuous step out of the boat. And it was steady. And then I I took that next step. And suddenly I was doing it. I was walking on the water just like Jesus. God be praised. But then, but then, 
the winds and the storms. They started to distract me and I lost sight of Jesus in front of me. And then I realized the peril that I was in. I could die out here. I could sink down. And I started to then feel like I was in a panic. And as soon as that happened, I started to sink lower and lower, feeling the water coming up on my legs. And that's when I cried out, Jesus, Jesus, save me. And then he did it. He heard my call. He heard my cry again. And he made his way toward me one little step at a time. And then he held out his hand and he reached down and he said, come, come with me. And I wish, I wish I could describe the look in his eye. I wish I could tell you how it felt when he grasped my hands with safety and security and power. And I wish I could describe to you the sudden, unexplainable peace that I had on the storm that was going on on my inside. But then Jesus scolded me. He said, why did you doubt? Why did I doubt? And then I realized and I remembered that the first thing that he said to us that night was, it is I, do not be afraid. And it was then that I realized that Jesus knows that when we are afraid and when we have fears, that's when we lose our focus. Nothing impacts human behavior more than fear, and Jesus knows that. So he says over and over and over again, do not be afraid because Jesus knows that if we lose our focus on him, that we will lose our focus on life. And Jesus knows and believes and encourages us to not be afraid because it's in the midst of our fear that we can begin to doubt in God. And so my friends, sisters and brothers, Hanover Saints, we are living right now in the midst of a horrible storm. We are all living in fear and the fear is real. The fear is real. We fear for ourselves and those we love. We fear for our health and the health of others. We fear about a society that is filled with division and racial discord. And we fear the future because we know it's going to be different. And yet we have no idea how it will be different. And so in the midst of this storm, more than ever, Jesus' message is so relevant. He's speaking to us today. And he's saying, do not be afraid. And so as we go through this journey and as we go through this storm, sisters and brothers, know and believe that you can step out trusting and putting your faith in Jesus. And know that if you should start to sink into the water, Jesus will reach down and pull you out. That's what Jesus does. And so let us, in this time especially, increase our faith, reduce our fears, and draw ourselves closer to God and one another. And so, my friends, sisters and brothers, be not afraid.
And so believing in the sustaining and the healing power of this water, we come before the covenant of baptism, the promises that were made, and we do so in prayer. A few prayers that I would share from the Hanover community. Eloise Downing has requested prayers for her brother Dan, who will be undergoing surgery to replace or repair rather a disc in his neck. Ingrid Dark has asked us to keep her in our prayers. Her brother Charles has been placed under the care of hospice and she is down in North Carolina spending her days bringing him comfort. And Sue Baker has asked for prayers for the Schwab family, for Greg whose mother Judy has asked for prayers as he prepares for surgery. And so we pray for all of those who are sick, those who are ill, those who are awaiting treatments, and those who have recovered. For that we give God's grace. And so now let us be God's people. Let us pray together. O oh God, our healer, show your compassion for the whole human family that is in turmoil and burdened with illness and with fear. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen to our prayer. Come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally. Heal those who are sick. Support and protect their family and friends from being infected. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen to our prayer. Grant us your spirit of love and self-discipline so that we may come together, working to control and eliminate the coronavirus. Hear our cry, O Lord. Listen to our prayer. Strengthen and encourage those in public health services and in the medical profession who commit themselves to caring for the sick and their families. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Inspire, give insight and hope to all researchers focused on developing a vaccine Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Sustain all workers and business owners who suffer loss of livelihood. Protect and guide all those who must travel. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Guide the leaders of the nations that they speak the truth. Hold the spread of misinformation and act with justice so that all your family may know healing. Hear our cry, O God. Listen, Listen to, to our prayer. prayer. Heal our world. Heal our bodies. Strengthen our hearts and our minds. And in the midst of turmoil, give us hope and peace. Hear our cry, O God. Listen, Listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. And now listen to our prayer, the very same one, that we learn from your Son, saying, Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our, our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so, Hanover Saints, we live in a time of stormy waters and battering winds. And so let us take the message from Jesus on this day, do not be afraid. And may our lack of fear guarantee that we will never doubt. And so may the grace of our saving Christ and the love and the companionship of the Holy Spirit and the everlasting love of God. May it be with you all on this day and forevermore. Amen.